Oh, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So what does that sound like? You know, sometimes we hear those things and we just say, yeah, somebody do that. You know, and we just sit there. But it sounds something like my mouth. It sounds something like your mouth. It sounds like something like our mouth. And uh, these, these are this important thing. I know Wednesday night uh, we just uh, kicked off uh, just talking about the words of our mouth. And, you know, the thing about it is, is uh, why it's so important. Wednesday nights are important because it's a time of discipleship. Uh, where you and I, not only are we fed to, on Sundays, but again on Wednesdays to continue to walk and be a doer of the word. And uh, every person in here is in a battle. Nobody, the, the Bible says there's no temptation that's not common to man. Um, and, and, and so we have to know how to fight. And, um, and, and you know, we, there's a, there's the fight that you and I are in, it's not natural. We don't wrestle against natural things. It's very much spiritual. And so um, what you're seeing even in, in, the, in these last days, you're seeing uh, the, the, that work increase, the battles increase. But where there's sin abounding, there's more, there's more grace, there's ability. And, uh, and I, I believe not only divine counsel, but like leveling up and in, in knowing how to just, in a sense, walk with the Lord and face adversity and be more than a conqueror. Amen. And be more than a conqueror. Amen. And um, something that... Uh, we're going to get into today's message here in just, just a moment, but I wanted to just share uh, maybe the, the after workings of the message I'm going to share with you this morning um, uh, of just the word in my heart, uh, talking because I'm going to talk to you this morning about imaginations and planning plan A, because um, there is no plan B, so let's plan plan A. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, wisdom is the ability to take knowledge, right, and assemble it. Right, They're like by wisdom, a house is built. Right, in other words, you can know how to plumb, you can know how to do all these things, but it's the taking of that knowledge and bringing it together. To, to it's the un, it's understanding. It's it's not just being an educated idiot. It's it's it, it, you know you can be book smart, but not really know how. You can read a book about how to paint, but not have a clue on actually how to do it. And um, anyway, and so what, what just the, the the work in the picture of my heart, and I thought like it was important for me just to declare this. Um, because the, every person here, every one of you, has the call of God on your life, and it's and and not just the call of God. And I don't. I, I, how much salt does it take to make a, a huge change in something? Just a little bit. We don't need huge. So many times we're looking. We 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 look at ourselves as just little, but God just needs this much, and He can do something amazing. I mean, I I think about just di- different individuals. You're an individual. An individual, I think of Michael Jordan, or I think of George Soros, or I think of uh, the guy that has Facebook, or, or Elon Musk. I mean, I'm just talking, people put these people in, like, way up here because they have big dollars, or that are just one person that has influence because they, they, they've used their influence. They stewarded a gift. And every person here, there's no, you have a gift. And so how you and I steward it, it, it takes you and, you and I uh, putting our feet one foot in front of the, uh, the other, and imagining. Imagining what God has said about you. There are pictures and plans that God has for you. There's, there's words that he's spoken to your heart, and maybe you haven't heard them yet, but there, there are words that he formed you, he fashioned you, and he, he deposited gifts and callings in you. And so many times we move on to plan B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and, and we're just just on this on this letter over here that is not even it's so far not far but just such a such it's still the alphabet it's still the alphabet and and we're working on ishmael's and we're working on things that are have nothing to do with what god said because our imagination uh has considered whatever it was as too hard or too maybe not even too hard or too lofty or just not not understanding enough, not thinking on that long enough to where God could breathe into you and me a plan so that we could put one step in front of the other. As you begin to imagine, what happens is your imaginations will pull you to action. And this is why it's so important for us to keep the word of God before us. Joshua, the, to be, be pulled into the promised land, he, the Lord told him, he said, keep my word before you. It'll pull you into the place that Moses couldn't go. It'll allow you to take over the land that is still filled with giants if you keep it before me. 
if you keep it before you, rather. So it's important that you and I keep what God has spoken to our hearts and, and, and his scripture, but what he's spoken to, uh, his, to our hearts before us. And um, anyway, and so I just was uh, just going through some of the stuff we're going to talk about this morning. And I was, the picture in, in my heart, just going back and going, Lord, what, what have you called? Uh, what, 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 is, what is the picture and the design and the desire of my heart that I would see? Um, well, like, what's the end goal? And so why am I doing what I'm doing? I took a drive, and I made a wrong turn, and an hour and a half later, I arrived at my destination. I was driving to Poto, and I went way the wrong way. I was going to Texarkana. Um, <clears throat> but I was listening to uh, just some teaching, and I just got lost. And you ever drive somewhere, and you don't realize you're driving? You know? Um, I mean, I was pulling a trailer. I was coherent, but I was, my mind uh, and my heart were in two different places. Did you know you have two sets of eyes? So my eye, you, you know, you have two sets of ears. You have these ears and you have these ears. And we, so many times we, we, we're looking with the wrong set. But I was listening and, and I was just thinking about what, what is the end goal? What is the, what is the picture, the end promise of why, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why just giving me some purpose, you know? I just re-clarify in, in a sense. And, um, and I, I don't know that I've ever really shared or articulated what it is, and, and um, it's just one word, is that, that my teaching, coaching, standing in this place would simply bring about a courageous church. That's it. Just courageous. I, I love to coach um, Little League football. My kids are grown now. But I liked it not because my kids could play or they were fast. I liked it because I got all 14 kids. And I got to talk to all 14 kids. I, there's probably some of the best memories. I mean, J.R. Williams, and he, we, we coached together. And I remember he had a couple of triplets. Two of them played. One of them wasn't even supposed to be playing because of spina bifida. And yet, calling out the grip that he had, his hands, on a, you know, we, just speaking to each kid and calling out and finding and, and the greatness inside of each one of them. Saying what God says about them so that they believe what God said. So that their imagination is not this. Well, I have spina bifida, so I can't. So I can't. So the next thing, you know what that means? I, I can't. Or, or this. Well, I, I'm just not good at that. So guess what the next thing, because they received that. Uh, guess what the next thing when they face? I, I'm not good at that. When they, when they are allowed to quit and not run to the end of the end, of the end line. Like, I, I, listen, I don't ask for anything but everything. That's what I tell these kids. We're, we're, listen, we're all the way. Run to the ball. Run to the water. Run to the line. Run. Were you walking? You, all I'm asking is I'm not at, you're not quitting. You're not quitting. This is because if you're going to quit now, guess what? Tomorrow when it gets hard, guess what you're going to do? You're going to not only start, start, start a pattern, you're going to begin to think and think this way. And as you and I think, so are we, Proverbs tells us. But with this word think or, or mind, it, it actually means to form or to build. To form or to build or to frame. Our minds are forming and framing, uh, uh, in a sense, a box and a picture of our lives simply because we received a word that... And this is why we're, we're doing what we're doing. This is why we come before uh, this word so it can change us, so it can tear down some strongholds, so, so that new things, the, this word can form in us uh, who God's called us to be and that we be a courageous church and we wouldn't have to be encouraged. We wouldn't have to be discouraged because we're just courageous. Be strong and very courageous. You know what courageous does? Courageous steps out. You know what courageous does? It believes that God can, with, I, with God, I can do anything. That he's always there. He'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. He tells us that, that 
Anyway, let's keep going. So I, um, we're going to go back to the beginning. We're going to teach today. But for me, the most basic statement would be is that we would be a courageous church. That, the, that, that why we're standing here, why I'm going to preach the word of God with boldness and with authority is because it is the word of God. And where the word of God is spoken, he is there. And, you know, it's amazing how much confidence comes to you and me when we are aware of him more than we're aware of something else. Like, be aware of him. We said this last week, the chief consideration this year, let it be that God with you. Almighty, El Shaddai, God Almighty. Let that be. When, 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 you know, when God Almighty showed up, I love that, showed up to Abram and said, hey, I'm going to change your name. So this morning we're going to kick off uh, uh, part two of, uh, of, of Start With One. And really this whole series is about getting our house in order. Getting our house in order. And um, part of getting our house in order is... is, is Starting, like, and I wrote on there, start with one. In other words, just get, get God's first. Get God back to first. Get God back to first in the way that we think. Get God back to first in the way that we plan. Get God back to first in, in just our approach to life. Get God back to first in our health. What is the first thing you consider? That's when you and I come into a, a place of adversity, the first thing that we consider is telling of what is how we've ordered our life. The first thing we consider that is telling how we ordered our life. So let's talk about this. When, uh, when, and I'm not talking about being irresponsible, but I'm talking about where we put our trust. When, when the Lord speaks something to your heart, is the first thing place I look to the checkbook? Is that the first place I look? Because that's out of order. And we're, gonna get, we're talking about getting this house in order. And this, the, um, our imaginations and where, the way that we think is so important. And so many times it's the one thing that goes and is left unchecked. So many times, it, I, I, if you could read, we, this is what we think about the, what we're thinking. We don't say this out loud, but this is what we think about what we're thinking. It's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal to, to watch that movie and fantasize about... Blah, 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 blah. It, let me tell you, who told you it's not that big a deal? Who told you it's not that big a deal what you're thinking? Yeah. Who told you, it, as long as I don't say those words, as long as I, it, it, let me tell you, you, your imagination will pull you to action. Yeah. This is how people rape people. Wow. It's how child molestation happens. It's how divorce happens. Yeah. It's how quitting your job happens. It's, a, it's, a, it's, how, it's how quitting a church happens. It's how walking away from the, your imaginations. Imaginations. It's also how, uh, how you step out into business where nobody's been before, where God has called you to step out and to, and to do something uh, for his glory. It comes from imagination. So I'm going to imagine, imagine, imagine you get a picture, you get a vision in your heart. Okay, so here we go. We're going to pick up and we're going to kick it off this morning from last week. Again, no plan B, so start imagining plan A. It's, start to, it's time to start planning plan A instead of planning for a plan C. No plan B, well, okay, well, maybe we need to look to C then because because we consider that, wait a minute, has God said it? If God has said it, it cannot be otherwise. Did you know the children of Israel were going to go into the promised land whether or not Moses did? Can I tell you that the promises of God and his word, are good, whether you're there or not, God will fulfill and finish his word and his work, either with you or without you. That's kind of humbling. It kind of makes it, makes it, makes it like this, that, wait a minute, I'm not quite as big of a part of this as he is, yet he needs my agreement. He just needs my agreement so he can be the power here on earth. See, Satan understands that as well. He just needs somebody's agreement. This is why words are so important. Did you know why somebody, some people just, like I remember, I, I tell this story to my kids. Um, as, as a young man, I was the husky one. Uh, I got, I'm one of six kids. And in my family, everyone wore slim, gym, slim jeans. And uh, this is back when, you know, you had slim, regular, and husky. 
And when I, I was the husky one, and, you know, I just thought that meant you were tough until someone just told me that, you know, husky. I thought that was just you're tough, you know, you're husky, like you're tough, you're strong. Until somebody just told, told me that I was, I, just because, no, it just means you're a little fat. And, uh, and so just as a young man, that was uh, uh, something that was a word that was formed in me, even to where it, my, my boys say, Dad, do you, did you see you in high school? Look at the shirt. You look, Dad, Dad. And I'm like, but in my mind, in my mind, even as a, like a junior in high school, MVP, blah, 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 athlete, uh, uh, even a friend of mine, he would come up and grab right here and go, chubba, grab the side. Just, I mean, he could pinch hard, just a, little, just a little bit of skin, you know. And he would, but it was a mental thing. Yeah. If you were to look at me, you're like, what? No, but I was just, that was just in my mind. It wasn't, it was, it was a stronghold. It was uh, uh, just always conscious, ever mindful of that word. There are words that you're mindful of in, 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 your, in my life. There are things, and it might be something that was all the way back to childhood. Did you know that that stronghold can be uprooted by the Word of God? A different image. A different image. You can have a scar in your mind that, that, that the Word of God can heal and transform to where you don't ever have that again. And when it comes, you recognize it simply as the enemy trying to come in and you kick them right back out. This is why Jesus had to take authority over, over and speak to Peter in such a way, I rebuke you, Satan, because what you have in mind is not... He was trying to get into... Satan was trying to get in Jesus' mind an image of what I'm doing isn't worth it. And if that image would have been built and formed and framed into Jesus' mind, he would have had a different track to run on, and he would not have finished. It was that important. The words you and I receive, it's so, it, they're so important because if we receive certain words about that's too hard, then guess what? It will be. It'll be too hard, and you will quit. This is the Word of God. We're going to look at Scripture upon Scripture upon Scripture here in a moment. But if you receive a word, let me tell you, it, that's what's going to be true to you. It's too hard. Well, I'm sick. You, you, you're going to be sick. This, this surgery changed my life. I'll never be the same again. You're right. Or you can put, put, put the God scripture back in there and what God says about you as, as a child of God, as the righteous, and that my path shines brighter and brighter and brighter. There's no this. There's no this. It's bright tomorrow. And you can start imagining how good it's going to be tomorrow. You can start imagining how good it's going to be in your finances tomorrow. You can start imagining what it looks like to be more than a conqueror or thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in your marriage. Tell me what a triumphant marriage looks like. Tell me what a triumphant business looks like. We read scripture all the time. You know, we, we're like, hey, let's get through this New Testament this year and that's good. And let's get two Proverbs, and that's good. But if we don't ever take time to meditate on it, tell me what it looks like. Tell me what it looks like. Go to Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 2. And we're not going to talk about writing a vision and making it plain. We're going to go to Habakkuk 2.1. And I just want, I want to ask you, how can you see God's words? It says this, I will take my stand at the watch post and station myself on the tower, and I will look out to see what he will say to me. To tell me how you can see words. Have you ever watched the, the, this um, voiceover uh, lip reading of the NFL. Anybody ever seen that? I just wish I had a watermelon. What? What? What do you mean? I want a Cheeto. I want a Cheeto. And you know they're saying something. I don't know about you. I'm going to Hawaii. Hawaii. You know, it, it, it's not what they're. It's not what they're saying. It's a guy trying to read the lips, and somebody does a voiceover NFL lip reading. It's so funny. I Google it. It's. It, on YouTube, it's so funny. They'll, they'll, and the, whoever comes up with some of these sentences that these guys are saying, and it, it looks like it, you know? You know what I mean, Jack? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you, you're like, are you dating my sister? You know, <laughs> nah, you better not be, you know? 
He's a, it's like, I th- your grandma. Oh, what? You know? <laughs> anyway, it's it just, it, it's hilarious. I was going to show someone. But how, he says, take, take a stand. Are, are we like watching what God says, like with our eyes? Like, okay. Uh, no, you look with here. He, he, the vision that you're to write for your life, you, you, you catch it by, by, by not these eyes, but these eyes. As you read the word of God and you imagine what he said, what does it look like to lay hands on the sick and have them recover? Because a lot of times what we're imagining is not the good. We're imagining what it would be like to because of the report, what the next few months are going to be like because it's the end. Why are we imagining vain things? See, a vain imagination is a self-imagination. It's one that's originated from, from self or opposed to what God says. It's vain. But you know, your and my imagination was given to us by God as a tool to paint a picture on the inside. It's, it's amazing how even right now we're, we're building a house, and it's kind of a funny deal um, how it's coming about. It was a shop, and then we were going to build another house, uh, and we were just going to build this temporary thing. And now this temporary thing, we just said, okay, let's make some adjustments and add on and do this and make it our house. Did you know the blueprint? It's um, just right here. That's it, just right there. So it's coming together. But I had, we had to take a, how, how are you going to create a box and make it look cute now? I mean, it was going to just be a box, a 40 by 45 box. So we got to make it look this way. An imagination, a mind, a blueprint. A blueprint. What, what, what are the blueprints of your, what is the imagination of your life right now concerning all, of, let me tell you, it can be, it can, your imagination can create some amazing things. The steps of your life the imagination is one of the greatest tools God has given you and me to take what I don't know how to do and all of a sudden create it. Imagine it and then do it. Imagine it and then do it. You're like, I don't, I don't know how. Okay. Imagine a little longer. Look at it a little bit longer. If I could just see it. I can just see it. You ever open a, a, a box and you, you get, it, get it, all the parts dumped out? All the, uh, and I use this analogy of a deer stand because I've put plenty of them together. You dump it out and it's got so many nuts and bolts and different size, just everything. And parts and pieces and the, there's these S's and one side longer than the other. And you look at it and you start flipping that white you know, directions. It's like English, Spanish. Okay, 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 all right, here we go. And you start, and you can't figure it out, and you're like, what in the world? And you see just that part, so if you just could see the box, if you could just see the image, if you could just see the image, this is what imagination does. Then you can bring it about. Then you can put it together. So many times you and I say we don't know how, it's just because we haven't taken time to look long enough. Now, so we're not, we're, again, no plan B, so we're going to start planning plan A. You know, we talked about Ephesians chapter 1, uh, 15 through 23. He said, uh, Paul's praying for the church at, at, at Ephesus, really for all the church. Um, he, he prayed that the Lord would give unto them a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of him. Um, having the eyes of the heart enlightened, not just these eyes, that you may know the hope to which he's called you, that you might know about your, the inheritance, the things laid up for you, all the promises of God, and that you would know the power. So it's, it's a big thing. Why was this so important? And this is kind of what we ended on last week, is so that because the fullness of God is in this earth through his body. So the body of Christ, we hear this term oftentimes, the body. Jesus is the head, we're the body. And if, if the body has no power, neither does here on this earth, that, that's a big deal to, to the Lord. The, we are to be the influencing factor here on this earth. You, you hear about salt, light, or where you're at in, on your job, you're to be the influence. We were just watching something last night. We were, I got home after uh, Cornhole, and we were watching uh, another a message that 
I was actually shared, uh, or it actually was last night at the, where, I, where I used to go to church in Minnesota. Um, really great message on just talking about where we're at here on this earth. And it's had seven different mountains talking about the different mountains and places that the enemy would love to have, uh, in a sense, own the, the leadership of those places so that influence can go down. And family and media and all. You know, in government. And, and so the enemy's trying to get into those places because if he can get into those places, he can rule. So he wants, he understands, and we should understand this too, but he, wa- he wants to rule. And, and, and so we should have leadership, Christian leadership in these places. The world is like, hey, listen, the reason the church is even backed into a corner in any way is because we're trying to get all of the church or all the people from the world into the church instead of trying to send the people from the church into the world. Preaching. Every, who, who's going to do this? Pastor Nate. Yep. If you're weak here, if your imaginations are ones of failure, can't, hide, don't know how, guess what? You're not going to have is the influence that you were created to have out there. You're to be a leader. In business, what, what are, where has God called you and where has He set you? Then rise in that place, be an influence, be a change factor. How, how? why? How? Right here, Lord, you called me here. Let me bring your kingdom here on earth, here in this place where you've called me. It's important that we, what we're here for is we're to be going there. Thank you, Lord. So why, so why is it so important that we know about these things? Because the fullness of him that fills all in all, verse 23, is the church. That's you, the church, the body of Christ. So let's go here. Four, Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been told, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he acknowledged his, the decrepitness of his body. In other words, he acknowledged that this... My body is old. He acknowledged that Sarah's womb is old. That's true. But what I'm going to acknowledge as greater than what I see. Against what I see, hope, the image, against that hope, I'm going to believe in hope. This is the second set of eyes. He was looking with a different set of eyes. Against what I see here, against this picture, I'm going to believe in this picture. Against this picture, I'm going to believe in this picture. And this is what would get, get you and I to, to move back to these eyes instead of these eyes. Yeah. You know, these eyes are looking at what is temporal and ever-changing. Yeah. And as, good, as fast as something can go from good to bad, it can go from bad and better. Yeah. If it can go from bad to worse, it can go from good to better. Yeah. Like somehow our imagination is always on this downhill slide. Instead of this uphill where he's going to bring us from glory to glory to glory. Let's start imagining that change. And I'm not talking about this, oh, you know, um, uh, positive belief or like some kind of. This is, this is the word. What you do here affects hugely what you do here. It determines whether or not you're walking in circles or your head is down or your head is up. It determines whether, what is going on here. What thoughts are going on here? What are you considering here? What hope? What's the greater hope? What, what, is the greater, what is the greater word? What is the greater consideration? What God said or what I see? Against hope, against what I see, Abraham believed in hope. He saw a different picture. Habakkuk, come on out and let me watch and see what God is going to say. You can't see what God is going to say with these eyes. You see it with these eyes, okay? And this is how we begin to partner with the Lord, all right? He, um, verse, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. Matthew 14, verse 19. I want you to see this. <clears throat> this is really, 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 really important. Um, it says, then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. This is when Jesus fed the 5,000. There's different times he fed uh, multitudes. But this is a huge, huge thing for you and me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said, blessing, and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. So what I want to really circle in there is he looked up to heaven. 
It actually, the word there is anapaleo, which means again look or look again. So he saw the crowds, but he changed, he looked up to heaven. He got his sight. He had to change where he was looking. The crowds, the fish, the loaves. Not enough, not enough, not enough. He saw again when he looked up. He saw again to look up. He had to change where he's looking. Where are you and I looking? Here or here? Jesus saw what to do when he looked up to heaven. When he looked up, we looked here. It wasn't just, oh, he's looking like this. He changed. He looked again. He didn't look, he didn't look with just these eyes. He looked with these eyes. What am I going to do? Okay. Thank you, Lord. We'll bless that. Just begin to pass it out. All right. Have you ever seen uh, Lion King? Anybody ever seen Lion King? I know it's been a few years back. But still for me, this is back when Disney was still pretty solid. Um, ish. <clears throat> but there's this part in the, the movie where, where uh, Simba, not Zimba, Simba, <laughs> he had ran away and he's, he's in the jungle and he's with Timon and Pumbaa. And uh, he looks in the stars and the clouds and all this and he tells them, what the stars are, and they laugh at him, and he, all of a sudden, there's this crazy monkey that shows up, Rafiki, and, and <clears throat> as he shows up, he, you know, t- talks to him about who he is, and he, he begins to run through the trees, and he said, I know your father, I know you, he, and he comes, and he runs and chases him to this pool of water, I don't know if you can, if I'm bringing you to this spot, and he comes through the grass, and he looks, and he he sees, he said, I know your father, I'll show you your father. And he looks into the, into the reflection of the water, and he looks, and he's at, he looks, and he goes, oh, that's just, that's just my reflection. That's what, that's what Simba says. And then Rafiki kind of does this, and he goes, look again. <laughs> and so he looks again, and the water kind of does one of the... And you can see his dad. But it wasn't, he, he changed his eyes. Is what, that's, that's that principle there that, that w- was actually taking place that you're seeing even what Jesus did. He changed what eyes he was looking with. With the, with the eyes of his heart, he saw something. And then after he saw that, it kind of went back to just his natural eyes. He saw something. Can I, I want you to look with these eyes, and I want you to look a little longer at these eyes. And, and, and maybe this sounds funny, but um, <laughs> sometimes those images that we get in our heart can disappear fairly, fairly quick. When I was a kid, and, and, and it probably still does, I still do this sometimes. Um, actually, I'm doing it right now. Um, if I look at a light that's bright, it, there's kind of like a spot that goes on your eye. Like everybody just look at, look at one light. Okay, just not a really bright one. Just now blink your eye. Can you still see it? You can do that. And as long as you keep blinking your eye, you can do that from looking at that one light for for minutes. If you just keep blinking, you can still see it. 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 It's, It's still there. We need to practice looking with these eyes. Again, there it is. There it is. And, and I remember what I, I would used to do this. Anybody ever do this? Like, you see, thank you. Yes. Like, you could, you could almost touch that, that it's there. Because, like, it, it, it's not way out there. That, that light is just right, that dot is just right there. It's just, now it's, it's right. It's so close. It's just, you know, it's what you do when you're at... J.C. Penny and your mom's shopping, and you're hiding in the clothes racks. Anybody else ever hide in the clothes racks? At J. Thank you. You're in the circle. You're like hiding in the circle ones. I like the circle ones, you know. Anyway, <laughs> look again. Look again. This is what Jesus did. I want you to see <clears throat> this very word that is says, "Look again." Look again, look again. Anna Paleo, Matthew chapter 11, they, they again received their sight. They saw again. Matthew chapter 14, 
looking upward, this is where it says, he looked again. He, he saw again. He's talking about the, the blind having not, not seeing. Now they saw again. It was like they couldn't see, and now they can see. There was a seeing again. Jesus saw again. Well, where did he see again? When he looked up to heaven, when he didn't just look down here. You want to see it again? Look up. You want to see it again? Look up. Don't look at what is, is not. Don't look at what you just see here. Don't look at just what you don't have in your checkbook. Don't look at just what your blood pressure says. Don't look at just what, how, how this has and how this isn't going on in the bedroom. Don't look at just how this is argue, always an argument and they never and the kids never and blah. Don't look at that. Look, look up and see again. What is the promise? What is the promise? Look up again. Psalms uh, 78. All of Psalm 78, so good, so good. This is about the telling of to our children about who God is. And, and so this is this, this really kind of a recapping of the children of Israel and how the children of Israel had great deeds done to them for them and the Lord did great things, but they didn't believe and they didn't walk with the Lord. And so here is this 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 the Psalm 78, this, in a sense, this writing or this song that is, we will tell our children of the works done by our God, even though our fathers didn't believe, we're going to tell our kids so that they know our God, and we will be, they will believe. So this is on the other side. This is like David as king entered the promised land. God was faithful, and he watched over his word to perform it, even though a generation of fathers remained faithless. Now listen to this, because again, we're talking about having our house in order and what to consider, and how even when we train our children to imagine, to imagine, and this is why our words, when what we speak to our kids, they, they, they really do matter. What you and I say to our kids. Let's say what God says about our kids. Well, my kid's diagnosed with this, and there's this, and there's this, and there's this, and this. Well, that's just what they're going to always have. But what does God say about that? Well, they just have asthma, and so they're going to struggle breathing, and they blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. So you want that to hinder their life? Oh, they're just AD. You know, I never knew about ADHD, ADD, D, D, C, D. <laughs> Backwards. I just thought, whatever, until someone told me that's, that's what it was. And then you know what I found out? That's not what I was because I wasn't told that. You know what I was? I was Nate, Husky. And I'll whoop every one of you, you know. <laughs> Farm strong, they call it. Farm strong. But I'm hungry, mother. I really am. <laughs> that, I, I, get, I understood 101 Dalmatians. I understood canine Krispies, you know. I understood that moment. I'm like, yes. When the, I, I would cry as a baby until the microwave went ding. And my bottle was done. That, that's the truth. My kids are going to hear about the Lord. You know what we tell our kids a lot? This is sick. I don't want them to get their hopes up. Listen to this. <clears throat> Give ear, oh, this is 78 verse 1. Give ear, O oh my people, to my instruction. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden from the beginning that we have heard and known and our fathers have relayed to us. We will not hide them from our children, but will declare it to the next generation. In the church, we've kind of somehow moved to this hope of, of just get, barely get, a, get by. We've kind of moved from, well, I don't want to t- teach my kids to lay hands on the sick because I don't want to get their hopes up. I don't want to teach the promises of God or yes and amen because they might not be because my experience and what I saw because of your imagination, what you saw a lot of what you saw and what we see has to do with our imagination. If our imagination changed, what you would see in your, what in your mind is a brightness and a brightness about tomorrow. And you would be filled with hope about eternity more than the sadness of t- today. This, it does matter what we set our minds on. It matters hugely. And here he says, he says but we're not going to hide from our kids. What? The promises of God. Who, he, who God is. We're not going to hide it. Just because, I, some, just because grandma struggled to believe or they struggled to believe, this is what God said. So why are you going to hide it? Yeah. Oh, because I don't want to get their hopes up. Okay. 
If you don't want to get their hopes up, you don't want to walk with hope, you don't want to have them walk where, with, with God all things is possible, this is what it says, all things are possible to those who believe. Listen, it, it, maybe you just need to check your belief. Well, yeah, well, I know the word says this. I know the word. No, I didn't ask you what you know. I asked what you believe. Yeah, yeah. What do you believe? I know you heard this. I know you can quote this, but you don't believe it because you're not even agreeing with it and speaking it and directing your life to walk that way with the tongue, with the rudder, with the steering wheel of your life. You, you, you move from belief and you expect it, be it done unto me according, be it done unto you according to your faith. It matters what you say. It matters what you believe. It's crazy how our imaginations will, will, will formulate into now beliefs. Our imaginations of, of a word received, husky. Now it's my belief. That's just, that was just my belief. Just, I'm just uh, kind of chubby, fat, dumb. When the Lord passed out brains, did you think he said trains and you go take a ride on one? Or what? Yet anybody ever hold the flashlight? <laughs> In those moments, there's times, and there's sometimes words that can, can, can penetrate and just reiterate. Anybody ever called their kid lazy? I have. You want that for them? Well, let's take authority over that in the name of Jesus and say something else. No, this is important. I take authority over that thought in the name of Jesus. And even over those words, and I take authority over that, and I say this. This is where you take authority and you, take, you cast down strongholds. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. This is 2 Corinthians. The pulling down of strongholds and imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the Lord. There are, there are thoughts that are coming at you all, all, all the time. And, you know, I was talking last night at, at the cornhole deal with, uh, with Joe. We were talking about the shield and the shield of faith. It's not this hiding weapon. If it was, it would be on the back so we could run. It's this a quenching every fiery dart. It doesn't just hit them like, ha, ah, ah. ha. It just puts them out. But the shield of faith, it, 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 what, what are you saying? What are you saying? And you know, a lot of times, especially with guys, you're not saying much, but this is sure noisy up here. And what's happening is, is we're just framing. Framing. Uh, my house right now, there's a place where I have this huge LVL, 24 inches by 38, 24 inch deep, double, holding up the whole structure of the house. And in order to hold that up, I had to put a two by six. And then another two by six, and then another so that it could get stronger. And you, when you and I uh, think, well, you're just, your dad struggled with this, and you're struggling with whatever, so you're just going to always struggle with your anger because that's how, and, you're, and you have no self-control. Your dad didn't have self-control. That's just who you are. It's just where you came from. That's just, and so in your, even though you're not, you're trying really hard out here, but the problem is what's directing out here is what's going on right here. And if I want to correct what's going on out here, I'm going to have to use right, what's right here to adjust what's in here. Uh, use your mouth to adjust. Take authority over that spirit, that breath, that word. And change your imagination. Imagine, like to this morning, I thought, you know, we could yeah, yeah, do a little exercise of the mind. You know, not of the, just the mind, but of the imagination. The mind is not your brain. It, it's where you and I form, uh, form ideas. We're going to, again, let me finish uh, Psalm 78. This is a, this is, these are important things that I believe if we'll take to, take to heart and we're, we'll get to the, as we get to the end here, maybe some exercises of let's get, Let's get a, a replacement here. And let's, let's get back on planning plan A. Let's get back planning plan A. There are pictures and dreams and, and callings that God hasn't changed his mind, even if you have. But you know, you can change your mind. Yeah. You could, just as you change your mind and you went to plan Z, 
You can go back to plan A. We're, you know, that's the great thing about getting to Z. A, B, it's like you get to Z. You don't have to even go backwards. You just start again. So he said, I'm not going to hide him from my children, but I'll declare him to the next generation. The praises of the Lord and of his might. I'm going to declare the wonders that he's performed. For he established a testimony for our fathers in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the coming generation would know them. Every child yet to be born to arise and to tell their own children that they should put their confidence in God. We're going to tell everybody, this is verse 7, we're going to tell about it to our kids about how, who God is. We're going to tell them, and we're not going to hide uh, the, from the next generation who God is and what he's done. Because you know why? We want our kids to put their hope in the Lord. Yeah. How can you, your kids put their hope in the Lord? How can the church continue to live and go on if your kids, if your hope's not in the Lord? If your hope's not in the Lord, and your picture, and your trust, and the picture you see, and against hope with these eyes, you believed in hope here. If your hope about tomorrow and the, or the, the fashioning of your days is not here, but it's here, and all that I see, and all that I hear on the news, and all this, how am I going to teach my kids that, 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 guys, I'm sorry that you're born, because you're good, just, you were born into uh, America, and it's going to hell. I just feel really sorry for you and your children's children. I, I just pray that Jesus would come back. Well, how about that Jesus would just go back out and show up into the places where we work and we would be the salt and be the light and our imagination and our voice and our direction of our days would be one of influence instead of one of hiding. Because So I'm teaching with the understanding of courageous. Brother Mark Hankins say this, you, you ought to be able to grab a corn stalk, swing out over hell, and spit in the devil's face. How many of you know a corn stalk is segmented? They can break pretty easy. In other words, courageous. Because greater is he. Well, what does this look like? Greater is he that's in you than anything you face in this world. What does that look like? What does it look like that greater is he that's in you? That, that, there, that, that there's a power that's greater in you that was put in this vessel of clay so that, that people would recognize it's not you, but it's him in you, Christ in you, this hope of glory. What does it look like? Well, it, it's like the light turning on the darkness. It just, that's what it looks like. I'm pressed on every side, but I'm not crushed. Why? Because that which is pressing out is greater than that which is pressing in. That's, what does it look like? What does it look like for me to hope in the Lord and that, that they, verse 7, that they should put their confidence in God, not forgetting his works? Hey, you remember last time the IRS was going to come and eat you? A few years ago? Are you still here? You remember how God came through? But you forgot about that? Because this time, like, even, this was big, though. This one's big. Do you remember? This one's big. But this one is big. Like, you remember, remember that? Remember God's faithfulness there? And I heard uh, Pastor Bill Johnson say this. He said, uh, so many times we think uh, miracles uh, are, are from the Lord are just, a, uh, and I wrote it down in my Bible, they're a temporary intervention. Instead of the, the revelation of his character. That a miracle is just a, hey, it's a temporary intervention. God came through just because you couldn't. Well, let me tell you, you can't. Like, at what point are the waves too big? Like, you can handle at what point? Like, none. The breath that you're breathing is not yourself. You're not self-sustained in any way. I'm not self-sustained in any way. So these miracles that we're going to read about here in, in Psalm 78... They're, they're done because they're telling of us, not that God can intervene. You know, when it gets too hard for you, he can intervene. They're telling to us, this is his nature. And there's nothing too hard for him. And my chief, this is as I order my days, as I start with one, as I step out to plan A and plan plan A, then I have to consider that if God is for me, who can be against me? I have to consider he has to be the chief considering factor in all of my one, two, three, four ordering. 
in all of my, my, my mind, uh, Abraham 99, he said, how, verse, Genesis 17, verse 1, Abraham 99. But in Genesis 17, 17, he says, uh, uh, Lord, in his response to the Lord saying, hey, you're going to have a child, how can a man at 100? He was calculated. He, he said, well, it takes a, how, Lord, how are you going to do this with this? I, I, I'm not going to do it with just this. I'm going to do it with you receiving what I said. And then as you receive what I said, you're going to begin to take steps that you didn't take before. And you had stopped taking. There are things that you stopped doing that were going to, if you were in agreement with the Lord and not grown weary in well-doing, you would have continued on and then reaped. There are things that sometimes, you know, and big things too. Sometimes, you know, the big things, we quit the quickest. But the big things take time to grow. I loved last week, you know, showing those slides of, of this last year. Oh, just so awesome. So many wonderful things. You just forget all of the good that God has done. So easy, so quick. But I was looking at Brother Ken Taylor, um, who's over in the Congo and, in, in, I don't know, had so many graduating classes on continents and uh, the Rama Kinshasa uh, in the Congo and just all of this stuff that's going on. And, and I wish you could see the last 30 years of ministry. It looked like this. What if on year 25, what if on year 25 he just said, you know, I gave it a good shot. I tried real hard. What about that? What about just, I, what about, uh, I was reminded of Levi's testimony. Well, I talk, tried to talk to my daddy a few times. I tried to talk to him again. I tried to talk to him again. And for years I talked to him about Christ and he didn't want anything to do with it. Where are you? Where are you on this believe God? Where are you? Is it tomorrow? And you're going to say today? This matters. You know how you and I quit? What we imagine. You know how you quit? What you're thinking on. My mom would say this, Mom, if you're watching, that's stinking thinking. And that stinking thinking will rob you of joy. That stinking thinking will rob you of what God made you for. That stinking thinking will rob you of bringing the fullness of Christ here on this earth. But they should put their hope in the Lord. That they should put their confidence in God, not forgetting his work, but keeping his commands. Then they will not be like our fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose heart was not loyal. Is your heart loyal to the Lord? This is, these are good questions. These are good things to ask yourself. And as we read this, it's like, oh, I got my 78. Uh, let's see here. There's 72 verses in Psalm 78. Woo, got that one done today. Well, maybe I just needed to stop on verse 8 and, and, and verse 9 and say, is my heart, verse 8, loyal? To the Lord, how quick do I walk away from him in a time of adversity? Well, God must not be keeping his word. Am I loyal? Is my heart loyal? In other words, do I hold to? Am I loyal? Because he never quit on me. He never walked away on me. Am I loyal? Mike, Mike could return that favor and use the grace that he's given me that's causing, is his grace that's causing me to even willing to do according to his good pleasure. Lord, thank you for that more grace. I need some more of that grace because I'm not quitting on that. I just thank you, Father. I come boldly to the throne of grace that I may receive grace, mercy to help in time of need. Father, I come to you today. Thank you. And what happened, just whoosh, encouraged. <laughs> anyway. Verse 9, the archers of Ephraim turned back on the day of battle. They failed to keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. Why? Because they forgot all he had done, the wonders he had shown them. Did, you, did we forget about the Red Sea? Did we forget about how the Lord led us out of Egypt? 
with his mighty hand. He goes on how he stirred the east wind from the heavens and drove the south wind by his might. How he, I mean, I'm, I'm, I jumped all the way, way down. Uh, did we, you did all I'm in verse 27. Did we forget about the mist of the camp when he brought the quail into this? I mean, brought the manna, brought the quail, got, brought, I mean, did, did we forget about that? In spite of everything, verse 32, they kept on sinning and despite his wonderful works, they did not believe. Wow, that's amazing. You didn't believe, even with all these great things. So here's my question is, at what point are you going to believe? What do you have to see to believe? There is nothing that you and I can see with these eyes that will cause you to exercise faith. This house can't couldn't be standing in the room like or standing there could in in this church to believe what God has say, said it, 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 this room could have a thousand people in it and I could still not believe what God said it's about talking about getting the word out getting the like what what there is nothing that these eyes can see that can cause you to believe but what you believe is you, what you, based upon, and faith comes, and I, I, I mentioned this on Wednesday night, but faith is not so much a choice as much as it is a will to hear, to will to, a will to receive. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Are you willing to hear? Are you willing to receive what God says and, and begin to receive that and look to? I'm looking. I'm looking to see. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can see that. It just, what does it look like to... What does it look like for these signs shall follow those that believe? Even he said, he, truly, truly, I say to you, Matthew 14, 12. Truly, truly, I t- I'm, I'm telling you something. It's going to be a little hard to believe. So I'm going to tell you this is really true. These works, anyone who believes on me, these works and greater, he'll do. That is required if you and I are going to be the fullness of him who fills all in all here on this earth. Do, do you, what does it look like, these works and greater? What, are I, what am I considering first? Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm not even close, y'all. So let's, let's look again with these eyes. Um, Hmm. You, you have to conceive the promises of God. Just like Abraham's promise, he had to conceive. He, you conceive the promises of God. You, they, 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 they grow in you. Don't abort what you re- that you got to receive. If you, can, if you can't see it in your heart, you'll never see it in this temple. Temporal or physical realm. The way that God brought anything about is he planted it in the heart or in the mind before he could bring it about. Psalms 1, verse 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of the sinners. So, in other words, it matters what you're listening to. What you're fed by, you will be led by. He said, you want blessing in your life? Turn some of that stuff off. He says, nor sits in the seats of the scoffers. You know there's scoffers in the church? You know there's scoffers even this morning rebuttaling the word that's coming out about what God said because of their experience in this short little bit of life? Where were you when God made the water stop? I don't know. But my considering factor should not just be my yesterday. It should be based on what he said. But but his delight, he said, blessed is the man whose delight is in the law. This verse 2 of the Lord. And on his law, he makes sure he gets his chapter every day so that he can check that box. No, meditates. Imagine. Imagine what it looks like that by his stripes you're healed. 
Imagine what it looks like that as his words, he said, his words were life to my body and I did eat. Yes. They were life to my body. And as I imagine what it looks like that laughter is, is like a medicine. <laughs> I want to take a little more of that. <laughs> I mean, if laughter is like a medicine, I have Sam, one of my boys, Samuel, he likes Pepto Bismol. Pepto Bismol. Pepto Bismol. Is what he calls it. You got any of that Pepto Bismo? <laughs> that Pepto Bismo is the stuff. It's the medicine. He was I, there was a time he's like, I gotta have some Pepto Bismo, right? Like to stop the stuff, right? He's like, but like, think about this. What if what if laughter was like Pepto Bismo? And you just took some. <laughs> what if laughter was a medicine that like what does it look like? These, this, is, this matters. It matters that we don't just read the word, but that we meditate, that we imagine this a mind. He says, is, he says that if you, if you meditate day and night, he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, and leaf does not wither, and all he does, he prospers. It's hot out. It's green. It's hot out, and it's hard, and there's fruit. It's hard. It's storms. There's battles, and he remains. And he's not moved. And God, his body is still on this earth. You know, God's body shouldn't look like this. It's just like this. Courageous. Strong. Bold. Let's pray, pray in pr faith prayers. Agreeing with what God says. Taking some faith steps. Faith Steps out on what it believes God ordained. I, I, it's so easy to move from that place of faith to play it safe. Where are you moved from faith to play it safe? Again, faith is not just fantasy. I'm not telling you to go make something up in your mind and try to do it. That's idiotic. I'm talking about taking the word of God and you meditating on it. And you look in and say, okay, Lord, and guess what? When you take the word of God, he, 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 it'll paint a picture in your heart, and the Holy Spirit will show up on the inside and, and clear the way so that these eyes can see, and you can look again, and all of a sudden you'll see again, hey, make them all sit down in groups of 50 here and start passing this out. This is how we're going to do this. This is how we're going to do this. this is, you know how we're going to do it? We're going to do it according to what he said. Same, same word, uh, who, he, that, he that meditates is this, again, it's this word mind. It's this, that you'll see that in Joshua 1.8, this book of the law must not depart out of your mouth, but meditate day and night. Oh, thank you, Lord. Mm. So imaginations will pull you to action. We'll, we're going to kind of hit a couple of things, and I'm going to try to wrap this together here. Um, oh, man. Yeah. We're on three of six, and the last three is really important. So, um, and it's 11.41. We're going to try. You got, give, me, give me 15 minutes. How about that? Got it? Isaiah 26, 3 through 4. You will keep him in perfect, steadfast peace, or, stead, or you'll keep him in perfect peace, the steadfast of mind, because he trusts in you. He'll keep, you've heard the scripture. You keep, him, you keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. If you. If you have your pens and your, Bi and your Bibles, you circle, circle eyes, circle mind, write mind, this word circle eyes, whatever. We're going to talk just about that word right there, the mind. It, and, and that, if you were to define that word right there, it just simply means the forming or the framing. The forming or the framing. When you and I build something... When you form or frame, you always build it to the mark. When you and I form or frame, you have to cut, you nail, you, you, you don't just say, here's the two by four, here, nail that up there. Well, where am I supposed to nail it? Well, I laid out the wall already. It's marked right there. Cover up the X. Put the stud there. Are you holding, it's, it's always to the right of the mark or to the left of the mark. It's the layout, the, the layout matters. The layout matters. So when you form, when you 
frame. He said, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, who, who forms according and holds to the mark. Now, what did God say? What did God say? This is how you set your mind on him. You don't just say, I'm a Christian. Just stay shut up. Just endure. You know, like you got a headache and you just kind of just grind it out. You know. That's not how. That's not how you keep your mind. I'm just going to. I'm not going to say anything. I know at least that. I'm not going to say nothing. Because I could say something. Oh, Lord. No, here's how. What's the mark? Right here. I'm going to say, I'm going to form, I'm going to frame, I'm going to form, I'm going to, to the mark, to the mark. So you know what it means to miss the mark? Sin. That's where death pays. When you decide to nail it up there, just nail it up there. Just nail it up there. Just. The same word that you see there, whose mind is stayed on him, is Genesis 6, 5. The Lord saw, Lord saw the wickedness uh, was great in the, in the earth, and that every thought, every intention, every formulating, the forming of his mind was evil. This is that same word, okay? It's only used like eight or nine times in the, in the whole, whole Old Testament. The mind, where you set your mind, where you set your forming. He said he saw that man and, and what they formed and what they fashioned was evil, and this is where... God sent the flood, but, he, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, Jump down to Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. Same thought. And guess what the Lord said? If, if uh, as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be withheld from them. It's interesting that even at that time, the Lord is making this declaration that your mind and what you imagine... Nothing they, nothing they imagine would be withheld. The Lord is saying this, that nothing you, this is how things come, God brings something about. Because if you can get you to think it, it put it before you, he'll get you to walk it out. This is why it matters what you're muttering. This is why it matters what you're meditating on. The same, uh, this, Isaiah chapter 29, look at this. This is so cool. Isaiah 29, just, I'm just trying to reiterate the mind in the forming, okay? Isaiah 29, verse 16. You turn things upside down, it says. It says, shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should say of its maker, he did not make me, or the thing formed say to him, who formed me? The thing formed is that word mind. He's saying the thing that was formed is the thing of the mind. The, the clay, the pot, the whatever it is, is now talking. What is the thing that's now talking? The mind. It, what, what I'm saying is your mind is what forms. And, and here, even in this verse, they're, 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 they, they take this word clay and they use, or this pot, the jar, the thing that was formed. It's the same word for mind. Because that's what the mind does. It forms things. It forms things. It for, forms containers. It forms limits and walls and barriers. The mind also breaks. I'm not talking about just this mind. I'm talking about the imaginations of the heart. And what you and I receive, this is why it's so important. This is how the enemy comes. He comes to steal the word because that right there had the power to produce God's plan. Your imagination partnered with him and nothing with him, it, with him, nothing is impossible. To him that what? Believes. You got it in your... <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians 2.14. This is kind of where... Um, I'll, I'll just ju jump to this. <laughs> Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. What does it look like to triumph? What are we considering? 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. What does it look like? To see in your mind, because it is a big deal, to think as God says. I'll tell you what it looks like. Peace. Wholeness. Peace, wholeness, nothing missing. Shalom. 
That's what it looks like, your life looks like when you and I put and we cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and we bring into captivity to the obedience of Christ, we say what God says, we begin to form and fashion the same way that in our mind, our ideas are ones that are congruent with God. Our ideas are to the mark that he said, yeah, as for me and my house, that's how they'll be here. As for me and my house, it'll be like that. All the promises of God, they're yes and amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. What does it look like? Some of your promises. Remind me, Holy Spirit, of your promises as I open your word. Oh, I see that one. Thank you for that. Thank you that I have the mind of Christ. For God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Father, thank you that there's not a spirit of fear in me. There's not a spirit of fear in me. I don't have to fear for my children's lives. I don't have to fear about that. I don't have to fear every time I get in the car and wondering if if we're going to make it to the other side and and make it to where we're going and worry about that. Father, thank you. I've not got a spirit of fear. Oh, thank you. What does it look like? What does that look like to imagine to not even have a spirit of fear? Whee! What does it look like? What does it look like? What does it look like? What does it look like to have more than enough to give unto every good work? What does it look like to be able to bring an offering with joy to the Lord? Instead of, God, I don't know this is going to be enough. What does it look like to to be able to simply say, the Lord is the one. Lord, you have made me rich. And there's no sorrow. There's no regret. Oh, Father, thank you. What does it look like to imagine, uh, to, to, what am I going to say to all these things? Romans 8, what what do we say to all these things? What What do we say? If God's for me, who can be against me? What do I say? that I'm more than a conqueror, what does it look like to win? Because I, I, we have a pretty good idea of what it looks like to lose. What does it look like to win? What does it look like to get the job that you were believing for? I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know where I'm going to I don't know. I don't know. What if I start imagining that I do know? And what does it look like to imagine the Lord orders my steps? I don't know how to parent. I don't know how. I don't know how. What about um, where he tells us to, to train up a child in the way he should go? Oh, Father, thank you that, that you've equipped me to train my child in the way he should go. Lord, I don't even. Ha, just think about that for a little bit. To train him the way he should go. Which way should he go? Or which way should he go? Which, how, 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 what is it, what, where, where do we go here? I'm at a crossroads here. What does it look like to stand at the crossroads and look and ask the Lord for his way? Yeah, I know Johnny's doing this, and I know they're doing this, and I know they're doing that, and I know they're doing that, and I know they're doing that. But what do you say, Lord? And step out on that. Well, what are they going to say? They're going to say, wow, look what God has done. Because you partnered with his word. And you, you're in my partnering with this word. It truly starts with hiding it in our hearts. Hiding it in, in our hearts. I guess today, I just want you to start planning plan A again. No more contingency, just everything contingency plan. Oh, well, that's not wise. That's not... Now, can I tell you what's not wise is not considering God's word. That's not wise. Not carrying hope to your children, to your grandchildren, to those around you, to the church, to your brother and sister in the Lord. Hey, I got this, I'm dealing with this, and I got this doctor's report. Well, you know, my mom had that too, and I'll just be praying for just peace for you. How about you lay hands on them and and command that spirit of infirmity to go? Headache, fever, go. What does it sound like? What does it sound like? Tell me what it, I don't know what does it sound like. But I'll tell you how. Imagine, what did it look like when Jesus spoke to the fever, when she had, did he say, what, how did, what did it look like? Well, how was he standing? What did it become? Be an imitator. 
of the Lord. Imagine. How can you imitate unless you go there? No, I don't really have that much of an imagination. You know, everyone, you're using your imagination all the time. If I was to ask you, how do you get home? You know what you would say? Your imagination would go to work. And you would say, you go up to this stoplight, you take a right, and then you're going to go about a mile, and you'll see this McDonald's on the left, and, you know, that was the lady's directions. And you're going to go this way, and that you're going to take a right by the big tree, and then you're going to like be driving there, it'll kind of go on the road a little bit, and you're going to stop. Got a good imagination. And that's where it'll be. You know, you walk through your house in the dark with your imagination. You know, your imagination allows you to take steps when the lights are out. It's time we not wait till I have everything and then I, because then who's it depend on? You know, there's a, the, God's not limited by money, but we are. When that's the, the, the first thing we think of when the Lord brings a direction. What about provision for vision? What about? What about triumph? What about winning instead of losing? What about that? What about having a better marriage than you did your first three years for the last 30 instead of quitting after 13? Take courage. It'll take courage. It'll take courage to believe God take courage. In this day and age, it'll take courage. You know what's the most amazing thing, though? Courage is contagious. You can turn a tide of a whole team when someone just steps up and says, let's go, guys! All of a sudden, heads down. All of a sudden, let's go. And you don't got them on your back. Nope, nope. You just spoke a word and you got them into their heart. And all of a sudden, the fight it changed because what they believed changed. You know what we need? We need some people, we need some believers to be believers again. We need believers to believe. We need believers to believe again. I'm going to believe. As for me and my house, part of way, the way we serve the Lord is believing what He said. Loyalty looks like belief. Will you find faith? He says, will the Lord find faith when he returns? He will in this house. He will in this house. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. We're going to cast down some imaginations um, as we close this morning. <laughs> I want you to I want you to think, you know the imagination that you're thinking, you know the, we're going to, I want you to, we're going to just take that exercise just real quick, um, and we're going to cast it down. We're going to cast down the days of darkness ahead, and we're going to, de- we're going to declare light ahead, because the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. My, uh, we're going to cast down that broken relationship, never going to be the same, and instead restoring and the Lord bringing back even what the worms ate up and that we thought was gone forever. We're going to put flesh on some bones. To the... We're going to just take some thoughts captive in the name of Jesus and bring them to the obedience of Him. Let's exercise that today. So like the same thing that you would do if you were in a gym and you had a trainer and we, everyone's going to look a little different, but you would, you know, he's like, uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the kettlebell swing and you're going to, you know, and, and they try to give you some form, but everybody's going to look a little different and that's okay because we're all going to be working the same faith muscles. And so don't, I, I'm going to, I'm going to begin to just lead out, but I, I pray I hear, I'm not praying. I'm asking you. I'm asking you for you to tap your heart and you to address the imaginations of your mind. It might be lack. It might be not knowing what you're to do. 
or where you're to go, whatever the, or how, I attack that. And I take that and, and, and put, replace it with what God says, that he, I'm led of you. It might be something, Lord, I'm led of you. I come under you. I come under what you say. And, and Holy Spirit, remind me of what you say. I'll say what you say. Remind me of what you say. And, let, and you know what will happen is? He'll, he'll, a rhema word will come to you. What is that? It's a spoken word of God will fill your heart so that you can speak it. Yeah. And it can change your tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for you. we thank you for the words that were spoken this morning, how, what you're desiring to do and lead our lives, for the words that you've spoken, that you've declared to us, to hearts, to your promises that are yes and amen. Thank you for your words to us. We thank you, and we say we're believers this morning. We are believers. We, be, we believe you, and we just say at your word, Lord, at your word today at your word. And we take authority over, right now, we take authority over any thought that is not uh, what you say. We take authority over a spirit of darkness and that my mind will always be uh, depressed and I will always be held and my mind is deteriorating. No, we take authority over that in the name of Jesus and say I have a sharp mind. I say I have a bright eyes. Uh, thank you, Father, for bright eyes. I, that you lift, you are the lifter of my head. We declare your word that you're the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We we declare over finances right now. We take that thought authority of the thought of lack and not enough and not enough and not enough and not enough and always behind and never able to do. And we thank you, Father, for a different word, a different word, that we will be able to give unto every good work. Thank you that you bring an increase to our life. Show us, Lord, the increase. So let us to think increase. Let us think as the flowers of the field and the birds of the air, not considering all those other things. Let us just think about bringing you glory. Let us just think about bringing you glory. What would it look like to give unto every... We just thank you. Just imagine what it looks like to give unto every good work. And we'll start there. Yeah, and so I'll just tell you, you start there. Start with the giving, not what you're buying. If you'll start with the giving and not what you're buying, you'll see that God will add unto you every good thing. Start with the giving. Begin to imagine what it would look like to give unto every good work. You've imagined the lottery for far too long. And what you could do with those dollars and what you would buy. The next time you think about the lottery and what you would do with those dollars, I want you to imagine giving first. Change your mindset, the flow. That you're a conduit of heaven on earth. In no way will you be limited to serve your generation. In no way. In no way. Increased. Increased. I want you to change your idea of identity about being an addict. But that you've been made free by the truth of God's word. And I know the truth of Jesus Christ, and He has set me free. What does it look like to be free and be able to say no? Temptation is strong. It's, it's, I imagine this. Everyone's gone. Nobody would know. Everything you ever wanted available for you to say yes. Imagine saying no. <laughs> I don't want that. Begin to imagine that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm free. Christ has redeemed me. Christ has redeemed me. Thank you, Father. The doctor's report. Imagine God's report. Mm. Strength. And with long life, I will satisfy you. Oh, all the way to the finish. Satisfied. Like a, what does it look like when you're just satisfied? Just where you would say, ah. Lord, thank you for new images, new places, any word, any place that there's been strongholds. Show us where we're held so that we can work on plan A and we can begin to plan what you say, that these lives would bring you glory. That where we're at, we'd be the, an influence for your, for your kingdom.
forever and ever. Forever and ever. Not stopping today. And so I thank you for just a spirit of might and power that rests upon your people. We just receive the anointing for today. We receive the anointing to parent, to be the mom and the dad, the husband, the son, the daughter, the employee. We thank you for your grace is sufficient. We thank you for your grace being more than enough. Your grace is more than enough. We just say that with our mouth. Your grace is more than enough. We're going to exercise. This is the burpee part. Uh, Your grace is more than enough. Your grace is more than enough for me. It's more than enough. You're more than enough. You're more than enough. You're more than enough. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, God bless you guys today. Hey, if you are here this morning and um, if you need healing in your body or or prayer or uh, or you want to give your life to Jesus this morning, let's just do that real quick before we close. If you're here this morning, then I want to talk to you afterwards. You know, let's just. Let's not do anything real quick. Let's just pause. And if this is important, if you're here this morning and, and you don't know where you'd spend eternity if your life was required of you, you don't know if Jesus is your Lord. Before we close, I just want to invite you to give your and surrender your heart to Jesus. Surrender your life. You do it with the words of your mouth. But you believe in your heart, say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. He said you'd be saved. So if that's you this morning, you don't know where you'd spend eternity, you've never made that decision, I want you to give that opportunity. Lift your hand right where you're at to give your life to Jesus. Anyone in here? Be bold and, be, be bold and strong. Thank you, Lord. I don't see any hands. I'll lead you in a prayer. Uh, I'm going to read you a prayer of rededication this morning. Um, the same prayer. Oftentimes, you can use to rededicate your life as you can for salvation. And that's ultimately making Jesus the Lord. You just call him Lord. And uh, this is something you don't have to wait till you're in the pews to do. Do it in your car when you miss it. Do it when you feel like a, a, a dirt bag. And just say, Lord, I want, I want to serve you. Just, just, just repeat this with me. Say, Father, I give you my life today. Every bit, I'm yours. Thank you for the strength to serve you, to be a testimony of your goodness beyond these four walls. Every area of my life, let it glorify you. Show me how to bring you glory on my job, with my family. Everywhere that I go, for you, I'm yours and you're mine. Thank you for your son, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's so simple, so simple. We make things too difficult sometimes and too religious. If you're going to read this, don't just read it. Meditate it. Imagine it. Imagine it. Your kids need you to imagine what it looks like to lay hands on people. There's someone that needs you to know what it looks like to lay hands because you're going to come into an opportunity and you're going to need to know what it looks like to do it. So, Where's the doctor? Where's the doctor? Where's the Christian? Where's the Christian? Where's the Christian? Where's the Christian? Where's the believer? Where's the believer? Where's the believer? Somebody. There's one right here. There's many right here. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.